Hello there guys, my name is Jay or DA and welcome back to another episode of the Space Engineers Spotlights where today we are looking at another digging craft. Something that is used for mining and something that we do actually see in everyday life around the country, around the world. And it is a digger and this is no ordinary digger, this is by Grindy Gears and it is called the Titan Excavator Mark 9 Heavy. And this is basically a um, Space Engineers modelled digger that works. But there is one catch. I've had to turn destructible blocks off because I'm having a lot of issues where things break and explode due to the amount of pistons and rotors this small craft has. But nevertheless, it is absolutely amazing. And I like the systems in play on here. And it does have one little bit of a mod on, which is by Digi. Digi and it is called the control module, which essentially allows you to um, attach key bindings to a certain movement on Space Engineers. So for this craft moving forwards um, is seven and nine, moving backwards is one and three on the numpad. And you have to hit seven and nine because seven is the left um, is the left track and nine is the right track. So you have to hit seven and nine to go forwards, seven and three to go to turn right, nine and one to turn left, and one and three to go backwards. Which is really really cool, but we'll get into that a little bit in a in a you know in a little while. But uh, just to let you know, this craft is spinning as we speak, and I don't really know why. <laughs> um, essentially, what you've got is you've actually got um, quite a lot going on here. You have this grabber section on the front, which enables you to have drills, which can extend outward if you do need a bigger spread. Um, we why is it why is it slipping so much? Uh, there we go. Then what you have is you have this grabber which can come down if you do require something to be picked up. So if you have sort of debris that needs moving or a broken craft that needs to be shifted out of the way. You can pick it up and essentially put it to one side and carry on. Um, you then also have all this mechanism that's going on here which essentially controls the arm which is just completely mind boggling. The amount of connections that have been made by uh, by the blocks is absolutely astounding. Especially on sort of sections like this where you've got rotor on rotor to piston sections on internal and external. The amount of joining up and connections that must have been made there are completely mind numbingly awesome. But uh, this craft does feature some really cool things. The whole top bed rotates like a digger wood and then we also have this um, boom arm which comes out. Now essentially that enables the operator to move further sort of across because you basically anchor yourself down on the floor with the wheels and they do have some landing gears that are later locked to the floor. You then also have um, this boom arm that essentially comes out because if you're working quite far away, if you're at full extension with this craft and you're working in a hole somewhere, and you, you really do need to see what you're digging at because you could swing the arm and hit something or break something or whatever. So this boom arm basically extends out and you have three levels of extension that basically enable you to see what you're digging and where. And it just gives you better visibility of the, the job in hand essentially, which is really, really nice and really, really cool. And also not, not to forget, this thing is very much solar powered. So we do have um, a very nice enclosed body to be honest, but we also do have um, loads and loads of, uh, if I can get out of this, we have loads and loads of solar panels. We have four on the side, four on the side, eight, and then we have two more on the top, which is 10, which is really, really cool. Now there is a button under here, which I've only just spotted. Um, rotor, oh what's this, oh wow, so we can actually get inside this, I never actually saw that button before, but we can actually get inside and uh, sort of add things, interrogate what's going on inside here, and for whatever reason the ship is turning on its own again, which is a little bit strange, and it's only been doing that since I uh, actually turned it onto destructible blocks, whether something is trying to break, I don't know. But uh, when you get in this craft, you have to hit one, which turns the, um, it basically turns on the uh, 60 hertz timer. And um, yeah, it's, it's, that, that works fairly well, to be honest. I've not had any problems with that. But if we were to hit seven and nine, we will actually activate the, uh, the wheels, which move us forwards. And again, this is where the, those key bindings come into play, um, which are really, really nifty and really cool. And I want to turn a certain way now. So we're going to turn one on and one off. So we're going to... We're going to turn 7, which takes that one on, and 9, which allows me to turn faster. And then we're going to hit 9 and 1 to stop us. And then we'll try and rotate the other way. 
And I, I tend to find hitting one first, or one of the buttons first and then the other, enables you to, to get that turn going. Because if you're on a certain incline or an angle like I am at the moment, it can be a little bit weird. Um, well, what we are going to do is we're going to actually um, hit 9 to push forwards if we can and try and get us onto some more flat ground because again this thing doesn't really cope with flat ground that well which again is another little bit of an issue but I like this as a concept it is really really cool and if Space Engineers one day gets to a state of complete stability this would work really well and it, again, it's just mind-numbing, well, mind-boggling how, how much time and effort is actually going into this craft. And we're actually drifting it right now. Oh, we're trying we're trying to get a stop on here, um, if we can. We're actually moving at quite some pace. There we go. So if we go into the second tab, we have all these buttons which enable us to um, toggle the lock override and whatever. So if we hit two, some... Uh, some pistons from what I'm led to believe will actually come out the bottom and uh, try and detach which they haven't weirdly enough um, so we'll try that again oh I'm actually moving the boom arm there uh, so what we want to do is we actually want to lock ourselves in position so we'll turn the warning light on if we really want to now what do these do um, we've got the cabin tilt, so that, those are the boom arm controls. And on, on, off. And uh, yeah, let's, let's actually get, get into controlling this thing, because it is pretty damn cool how yeah, this thing works. So as you can see there, I just hit W. And what that does is that brings the, the arm up and S brings it back. So we can go down and up. Now of course, I am, I'm not locked down at the moment, which is kind of a letdown, because the... Um, the landing gears aren't working appropriately, but uh, what we can do is we can raise and lower this to specified heights. And if you hit one, you can kind of get fine. Well, if you hit like it once, and then sort of take, if you basically just click it and spam click it, you can get very fine adjustments. So there we go. So I want to sort of just go forward a little bit, an inch forward, which. As you can see, it's doing quite nicely. It is moving again because we don't have that stability or that lockdown. But uh, yeah, so the other buttons, um, what they do on here is we have five, which will turn the ejectors on and off, which they're currently on. We're going to turn those off for now because, of course, we don't want to be spitting materials everywhere. And then again, we do have this boom arm control. So if we hit, if we hit nine, I believe, one of these buttons, if we hit, I'm hitting eight at the moment. And that's sort of bringing us out to the first extension point. Now you can only really do this in a certain way. So it's 8. Then it's 9 which pushes us out that way. And then it's 7. And that's essentially what the boom arm does. It, it allows you to appear into the hole that you're working in. So if we were to go into this. As you can see we, we, can, we can easily see what the hell's going on. And if you hit 7. These will actually uh, take themselves back to a, a normal position of sorts so we'll actually rotate ourselves back round and uh, we'll uh, come back in there so if we uh, long one there we go so if we eight we will sort of rotate back round on this sort of really cool sort of system he's got going which again is absolutely awesome so other controls for this arm so we had W and S which raise and lower the main arm we then have A and D, which uh, rotate the traverse. So it basically rotates the whole body. Now, again, this is on a hold basis. So you have to hold the button for it to sort of register. So if you're tapping them and going, what the hell's going on? It's purely because you have to hold them in. It, it, that's how it works. It's essentially like a driving game. You, you have to hold the button down to, to go faster and then hold the brake to slow down and stuff like that. So uh, then if we go Q and E, which is to bend the arm, that bends the sort of the central arm there, which uh, enables us to get higher and lower, which is again, really cool. Um, we then have R and F, which move the thumb, whatever that is. So, ah, there we go, so that's the thumb. So that is the claw, which we can bring down and clamp stuff with. 
which again is look at it move it's just so cool i like all the moving bits it's it's really really awesome now we have up and down which are the push and the pull um so that is the push and the pull on the stick so that is um if we wanted we could lift the arm up um it should hit the brakes there we go and um, so if we want to push out further or pull in we can do um, and we then have left and right which curl the bucket so we can curl the bucket quite nicely which again is super super cool so let's actually try and excavate so we're going to try and use these controls and uh, hopefully get somewhere with them so we're going to curl the bucket round as far as it can go and we're going to bring this arm out if we can there we go so we're going to bring it out as far as we can go. I'm going to actually do this from the cabin. There we go. Now we're going to curl the bucket. So it's in some sort of 90 degree. We have control over the drills so we can turn them on and off. We also have an extension feature which enables us to extend our reach. But of course there will probably be some gaps um, with the digging consistency. But uh, if we then start to move the boom down... And downward, like that's the wrong button altogether. I need W and S, don't I? So what we can do is we can lower this down. And it's a bit jumpy, but we can start to dig. And here we go. We can. We are. We are away. We are digging. We are legit digging our way to glory. And we're gonna bring this forwards ever so slightly so we come back on ourselves and we're gonna try and curl the bucket upward so we can sort of get it on a good 90 now we are of course pulling um ourselves towards this hole but again this is just to prove that it could work again if we had that lockdown that that essential lockdown onto the planet this would work 10 times better because of course it would be a stable platform but uh it is trying to really yoink me in <laughs> uh my god but uh yeah it is a, it is a bit jumpy it is a bit clunky and you guys probably won't go and check it out but i really would just to see how it works and get some ideas on how to do something as cool as this because even though this doesn't work in survival that well or at all half the time because again it blows up and breaks i would seriously recommend checking this out because it is just a bonkers build, and I, th I, th I think that is it. It is. It's just the sheer bonkersness of this build gets me every time. I'm actually going to get out of this hole if I can, because I kind of drove us into a hole by pulling us. But again, it does work, sort of. Again, without that hold on the floor, it, it has struggled a lot, and that probably has sort of wavered a lot of your guys' opinions on this ship. But... Again, for what Space Engineers is capable of doing and where it really needs to be, this is a good sort of point. It shows that Space Engineers can cater for multi-moving components and stuff, but it shows there needs to be some more stability built into the game and when Space Engineers does get to that point of very, very stable gameplay, we'll hopefully see a lot more of this, which really gives me hope for the future. So if you guys have enjoyed this by Grinding Gears, go and check it out on the workshop. The link will be in the description below. If you guys have anything else you want to go and check out, drop a comment in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed. If you didn't enjoy it, you know where the button is. And I'll see you guys later. Peace!